Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of Sunday Morning Preview. I'm Billy Hunt, here with Eric Van Horn and Matt Gardner this week. Also over on the other side of the studio, Josh Mobley. This week, we already had one game, Thursday Night Football. We saw the Vikings play the Redskins. The Vikings won that game 19-9, and now over to Josh to talk more about that game. All righty, like Billy said, Vikings and the Redskins played this past Thursday night. You had this final score 19-9. Vikings was the one that prevailed. This game was like a revenge game for multiple people. For Adrian Peterson, he played his former team. Case Keenum played his former team. And Kirk Cousins played his former team. So, you know, this is a game that people were very familiar with each other. So, But the Vikings was able to overcome this game and win uh, behind Delvin Cook's 98 yards rushing and 75 yards receiving, and also Stephon Diggs' 143 yards re receiving through the air. And Kirk Cousins had over 20 yards through the air. But the Vikings defense also showed up. They had four sacks. They had interceptions, four fumbles. So they was getting them, you know, in the groove of the game, multiple aspects. And the Vikings side, it wasn't too much to really talk about. But Adrian Peterson, you know, hit behind his rushing attack, he was able to go through the ranks in the rushing in the career, in his career standings. And now he's six all time in rushing. So that's really big for him on his part, for his accolades and his milestones in his career. But he was not, be, was not able to, to take the W because of Delvin Cook and Stephon Diggs in the Vikings defense. So the final score was 19-9, to and that was Thursday night football. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Just a, kind of another boring Thursday night football game, a trend <laughs> we're getting used to. But one thing I did see in this game that was awesome to see, Adrian Peterson – breaks, or not breaks, but goes six all-time leading rusher. Everything he did for that Vikings team throughout the years, he was incredible. And the Vikings fan even gave him a standing ovation, so that was good to see. And on another note, I want to talk about, start talking about, opening up to the panel, Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. Dwayne Haskins has not looked good in the two games he's appeared in, and I'm starting to wonder if he may be not been the right pick. I'm thinking he's a bust, straight out. Like, look, I know it's only first, first season. Yeah. You know, he's got a got a career that we could watch, but, you know, like you said, not looking good whatsoever. His past game was terrible when I went to go see him against the Giants. Danny <laughs> Dimes. I'll play Danny, him. Danny Dimes. My guy. You guys know. Big New York person. I'm wearing a jersey. <laughs> All I got to say. Um, I'm not ready to write him off as a bust yet. He hasn't had enough time. Okay, first of all, the Redskins are horrible. Yeah, that's so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can't. It's it's kind of what people were expecting out of Kyler Murray when he got drafted. Is that the the Cardinals weren't expected to be good either. They're not. So it's like you can't expect too much from him because his yeah. team's one and that makes seven. Sense. So if he actually gets better people around him, then I'd be willing to see what he actually could do and whether or not mm -hmm. I'd. I'll determine it then. Yeah, and another thing to see is, like, he doesn't have anybody to throw to. Him and McLaurin, Terry McLaurin, who's unbelievable, having a great rookie year, they have a really good connection because they played together at Ohio State. They were teammates. And I, I think another reason, like, you can't, if I'm a Redskins fan, I don't know many, and I wouldn't really want to, if I was a Redskins fan, talk about that right now. But uh, you can't dwell on that because he wasn't expecting to play at all. Mm -hmm. Coming in in a backup role is so much different. We saw Teddy Bridgewater, same thing. When he like came in the first game when Drew Brees got hurt, he didn't play well and they lost. But then since he's been able to game plan every week and know he's the starter going in, 5-0. and So you, I, like I said, I don't know Dwayne Haskins. I'm not going to write him off like you said. It's smart to not do that. But we'll see. I'm excited to see. Maybe he will get a starter too in the next couple weeks and we can really see what he's got. If I'm the Redskins, mm -hmm. why not give it a chance now? You're one and seven. You're not going anywhere. See what this rookie has. Let him get some experience. The only thing, only thing with me with him is like, he's not smart okay. enough on the pass game. Like his deep ball worries me. He throws. He was throwing too many picks already, and he, like you said, he hasn't even started or played that much. But for me, that's the one thing that's worrying me is that he's just not a smart deep, mm -hmm. deep ball quarterback. Yeah. and you need a guy that's yeah, gonna run that. Yeah, you need someone that, that can yeah. stretch it because he's not mobile. He's not yeah. a mobile quarterback. And another thing. In this game, the Vikings did not look good at all. I'm not going to write them off because they've been having a good season. They've been playing well. They're 5-2, and two, but they looked terrible. If Case Keenum plays that whole game, I honestly think the Redskins could have won. Mm -hmm. But, like, all in all, 19-9 game, not a great one Thursday night. Not too worried if I'm a Vikings fan because you got the win. Yeah. A, win and a, a win is a win in the NFL. And uh, Redskins, just cross your fingers and hope Dwayne Haskins is the guy you want him to be. So that brings us to this week. 
week eight NFL mm -hmm. starts and sits. We're going to go over to Josh. Start it off with his starts and sits for the week. All righty. For the starts and sits this week, you got to and you better. So you got to start. God is coming back who we haven't seen in a long time, and that is Drew Brees. He is starting against the Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals, and I believe that he will have a big day today because, you know, he, it's just sitting on the sidelines, seeing your back up, getting the games, and win these games. is like, man, you know, you're itching to get in. You're itching to throw the ball. You're itching to, you know, to explode. So I believe he will explode against the Cardinals' defense, you know, which I believe will probably be another shootout. So he will explode. Next, I believe Jordan Howard versus the Bills is a person you got to start because it will be a rainy game, and in the rain, you need a run game, and you need a defense, and it will be a messy game. And I believe if for the Eagles to even win that game, Jordan Howard needs to have a big day and, you know, come into that two uh, tight end personnel running out of that. So he should have a big day. And you got to start Aaron Jones versus the Chiefs because Aaron Jones with the Packers, he's showing off. He's like a gym. He's like that focal point of that offense right there, getting receiving touches and getting, you know, touches in a rushing game. And I believe he'll go off against the Chiefs because the Chiefs' uh, rushing defense isn't really that good. And they got Matt Moore out. And I believe Aaron Rodgers and the boys will try to, you know, this will be a game they'll cruise through, I feel as though. So he will do his thing. Marvin Jones. Yes, the Giants is another person you got to start because Marvin Jones just had a big game last week. You know, he had three touchdowns, you know, over 100-something yards. A big day. Nobody really see that coming. But I believe he'll continue that momentum and keep it going. Next, you got to start Tyrell Williams versus the, the uh, Texans because Tyrell Williams has been scoring every time he's been on the field. He hasn't been on the field the last couple weeks, you know, because injuries. But every time he touches the field, he scores, and he is the best wide receiver on that team, and he will show up today. Austin Hooper versus the Seahawks is another person you've got to start with. Austin Hooper has been playing like the best tight end in fantasy, and he's another focal point of that uh, Falcons offense. You know, he, he leads the team in receptions, and he's scoring a lot. He's getting a lot of touches, and I believe for Matt, um, no, Matt Schaub today, he will, you know, go to his target, Austin Hooper, because, you know, when you got a backup in, you usually go to familiar targets or tight ends, guys that are a little more friendlier, and that's the guy that's more friendlier through the middle. And then one, last one you got to start is the Patriots defense versus the Browns because the Patriots is the number one defense, and they're going against the Browns who have a bad O-line, and you're playing against – Baker, who's a very emotional guy, you get to him, he'll get in his emotions, get in his feelings, and I believe he'll just, you know, throw in the towel in that game. And for the ones you better sit, it goes with the whole Patriots-Baker thing. Odell Beckham Jr. got to sit because of the Baker, th you know, Baker situation, and then also because he's going against Stephon Gilmore, and I believe he'll get shut down. So I don't expect him to really go off and sit Baker, sit the whole Browns def uh, offense. That's really all I got to say for that because it will be a great week, and those are the guys you better sit and you got to um, you better sit and you got to start today if you want to be successful in week eight. And I promise you, you will win. Enjoy the day. Yeah, a lot of good points there, and uh, you can start off with your starts and sits. Mm -hmm. Give so, me your sits because uh, kind of a recurring theme. Yeah, here. you know, I had basically the entire Cleveland offense as well as I have Jarvis Landry. Odell, Nick Chubb, literally the entire Cleveland offense. Just, yeah, get rid of them. And then my starts, I got Golden Tate. He's coming he's coming back to Detroit. Big Giants guy, <laughs> you know. So um, first time back in Detroit, I feel like he's going to have a 100-yard game. He's going to go off. And then Drew Brees, same thing. He's coming back. Yep. He's, he's got to prove that he's the, he's the starter, and Teddy's just got to sit down and wait yep. his turn. The thing that worries me about Drew Brees, I know Kamara's not playing this week, so the backup, Latavius Murray, had a really good game last week. The thing that worries me is, like, Drew Brees, gets a, they get a lot of rushing touchdowns. That's the thing, fantasy-wise, as a quarterback, you need to throw touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But it seems every single time Brees gets into the red zone, they run the ball and score a rushing touchdown. And, so like, um, Alvin Kamara scored – so many touchdowns inside the 10-yard line, and it's the most frustrating thing as a Drew Brees fantasy owner. So that's the only thing that worries me. If you have someone better, I might start them this week because I could see them being up a lot. But if you don't, Drew Brees is a must-start because he's going to throw for a lot of yards against mm -hmm. his abysmal Cardinals defense. But my starts, I'm going John Brown against the Eagles. I don't know what the weather's like in Buffalo, but if it's raining and really wet, don't start John Brown. It's probably cold. But, yeah, I mean, but if it's a decent day and not as sloppy as this game could be, 
definitely start John Brown against this Eagles secondary. He has a really, him and Josh Allen have been on the same page all year. John Brown's a good fantasy start. And then also Marquez Valdez Scantling. We talk about him all the time. Caught a big touchdown last week late from Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is going to have another huge game this week. And once Rodgers gets hot, it's scary. So look out, NFL. He's in the MVP running. So I'm starting Marquez Valdez Scantling. Sitting this week, Keenan Allen. Don't start him. He's hurt. He's going to play limited snaps if he plays. But if he doesn't play, obviously you can't start a guy who's going to get you zero points. But if Keenan Allen does play, don't play him. I heard their coach, Anthony Lynn, saying he's getting limited snaps this week. Then also David Montgomery. Because you just can't trust the Bears' run game at this point in the season. They'll give it to Cordell Patterson. They'll give it to T Taylor Gabriel. They'll give it to Mike Davis and Tariq Cohen. And he's splitting carries with five dudes because Matt Nagy loves to run with his wide receivers for some reason. So don't start David Montgomery. I know he was a high pick in a lot of leagues, but you got to think about maybe even dropping him at this point in the season. Um, I'm starting Chase Edmonds. Uh, he's, he was the backup running back for the Cardinals. Uh, last week had three touchdowns. I sat him for some reason. Uh, David Johnson isn't playing this week, and he actually isn't going to play next week either. So they, they did sign two running backs, um, Zach Zenner and uh, some other guy. But, yeah, but Zenner's more of a they're not, line. They're not going to no, play. No, yeah, they're not. They're just uh, in, case, in case of injury. Yeah, exactly. So Edmonds is going to take over the full um, three-down roll for them for the next two weeks. Zenner could get a couple carries here and there, maybe a goal line, but, yeah, but other than that. Uh, so he, got, he had 35 points last week, and I'm going to start him again. Uh, against the Saints. The Saints actually do have a pretty good run defense, but Very good. if you have that many touches, I'm willing to take my chances. And I'm going to sit Emmanuel Sanders. Um, this is one I actually had to contemplate in my league. I have both of these guys. I have Edmonds and Sanders. And I was, I was really excited when Emmanuel Sanders got traded because I think he's going to get more opportunities on the 49ers. Mm. But um, it's his first week. Yeah. He might not have much, not as much time to learn the whole offense. Plus, Kyle Shanahan's like a really smart guy. So we pro it's probably not a very easy offense to learn. And run heavy. The 49ers mm -hmm. run a lot, and the Panthers actually have a really good defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sit him. Those are good ones. Good ones all around. Yeah. So we're hoping everybody is doing well in their fantasy leagues and uh, gets another win this week because it's coming down to crunch time. Yeah, These next few weeks can make or break you, making it into the playoffs. But uh, we got a pretty eh, a decent slate this week in the yeah. NFL. Not yeah. too many exciting games, but uh, we'll kick it back over to Josh with two-minute drill. All righty, two-minute drill time, so we're going to run through it. Today, Sunday, a lot of big games. Some games will be messy games. But from 1 o'clock hour, we're starting off the Seahawks versus the Falcons. Russell Money Wilson against not Matt Ryan, but Matthew, uh, Matt Schaub and Julio Jones and all super and all them guys. So we'll see how they do with a new quarterback on their center. Then you got the Eagles versus Bills. Told you this would be a rainy game, messy game. Josh Allen, Carson Wentz. But this game should be highlighted under the – Runner backs, Jordan Howard, and then all the runner, Frank Gore, and all them guys that he got over there in the bill. So we'll see what that happens, goes over there. So, run game and the defense, look for that game. Chargers versus the Bills, you know, wow, that Chargers is not doing that well this year. Can they go on track against the Bears? But the Bills, Bears also needs a bounce back game. So we'll see two desperate teams for a bounce back game, see what happens. Next, you got the Giants versus the Lions. You got, you know, Daniel Jones against Matthew Stafford. You know, these guys should um, definitely have a big game, guys passing all throughout the down the field. So we'll see. And, and then you got Saquon Barkley, you got Ty Johnson, a guy coming in, you know, fresh starter. So we'll see if you have a big day today. And you got the Buccaneers versus the Titans. Jameis Winston is having a down year. Can he get on track against the Titans? Well, you, Marcus Mariota already got sat for Ryan Tannehill. Can he you know, keep the Titans going. They had a big one last week where they keep the steam rolling. You got the Broncos versus the Colts. You know, Jacoby Brissett is having an MVP type of year in that conversation. He should definitely continue to, you know, put his further himself in that conversation against the Broncos, who's a lot of people are leaving town and, and you know, going to different places, destinations. And you got the Bengals versus the Rams, Jalen Ramsey against Tyler Boyd and all them guys who will shut them down, you know, um, Andy Dalton going against that tough defense, Aaron Donald, he should be on the ground probably a lot of times. You got the Cardinals versus the Saints, Kyler Murray, and Drew Brees is back. Drew Brees will, should be able to carve up that Cardinals defense, but it's a great matchup because he's going against Patrick Peterson, Patrick Peterson, and Michael Thomas. That should be a matchup to look forward to today. Next, you got the Jets versus the Jaguars, Gardner Minshew. Should have a big day against the Jets defense. You got Sam Darnold, two young quarterbacks 
is really the recipe for a good game, for real, for real. Then you got the afternoon games. You got the Panthers versus the 49ers. This is a big game. Got Emmanuel Sanders making his debut on the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo versus you know, Kyle, I mean, Kyle Allen. You know, Cam Newton, the Katina Rehab is knee. And you got your man Kyle Allen doing very good. And you got Christian McCaffrey going against a top five defense. Who will win? Who will edge it out? You got the Browns versus the Patriots. Baker Mayfield against that number one defense against the Patriots, you know, and Tom Brady going against that defense in the Browns. Bill Belichick should be able to outsmart these guys today. You got the Raiders versus the Texans. John Gruden and, and Derek Carr against Deshaun Watson, who's an MVP candidate. He should be able to continue to solidify his rank in the MVP candid, uh, candidates today. And then you got the Packers versus the Chiefs. You got Aaron Rodgers against Matt Moore. Yes, Matt Moore, no Patrick Mahomes. So this game won't be as exciting as it would have been, but we should see the Packers and Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers steamroll against the Chiefs. And Monday night, you got the Dolphins versus the Steelers. Mason Rudolph and James Conner against nobody on the Dolphins. So they should definitely have a big Big day over there in the Steelers, and the Dolphins will continue to fight for their case for number one in the draft. So enjoy Sunday and enjoy your Monday games. And, you, hey, so have your popcorn ready, have your cheesesteaks ready, and enjoy football today, and enjoy the games. See you. Thank you yet again, Josh. I mean, I know I'm going to enjoy my Sunday games, but uh, I don't know how entertaining that Monday night football game is going to be. <laughs> but... Uh, so we got three games on slate for you today. Kick it over to Matt, start it off. All right, so I got the Eagles and New York's B team, the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> so me personally, they might be the B team, but they're playing pretty well. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Bills over the Eagles. Bills defense, crazy. They're going to eat up wins, honest. It's, it's really yeah. good. It's very under, like, because there's not a lot of big names on yeah. that defense, but it's unbelievable. Yeah, they're, they're nuts. Um... Not even just um, their defense, the Eagles' defense. Nah, I'm not really. But I think this game but fits the Eagles if it's raining. You got to think about that. Because yeah. then they can't really get burnt over the top in the secondary. I mean, I don't know. But <laughs> Boy, if Josh Allen can throw the ball really far. Yes, he can. Yes. He's got a cannon. And also, not really a stat that a lot of people are looking at, but the every single time the Eagles are in um, the red zone, so far, Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott together are 9 for 10 with four throwing touchdowns. True. So if, honestly, the Bills march down the field, get in the red zone, game's over. Yeah, it's, it's big. Uh, it's a pretty entertaining game because this Bills team is, like, really surprising. Their only losses to the Patriots, yeah. a close game, yeah. a touchdown game to the Patriots, held Tom Brady to 17 points. It's a story that I wouldn't think I'd be talking about if you told me this six weeks ago, hey, mm -hmm. the Bills are going to be right behind Tom Brady nipping at his heels, and they're going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah. But it's good to see. Like, it's good to see. I'm happy for Josh Allen. I'm happy yeah, for this Bills look. team. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. a new look team. They're playing a different style of offense. But I don't know in the playoffs and deep later in the season if they start playing better teams because they are playing a last place schedule. Also, they are kind of – they're very inexperienced as well. Yes. If they get to the playoffs, which I think they will because their schedule is not very strong, can you rely on Josh Allen to score you enough? Yeah, shaking no. your head. Yeah. I don't think Josh so. Josh Allen's seven, so far is seven touchdowns, seven picks. Yeah. They're only winning games because they don't play good teams and they have a good and defense. defense yeah. yeah, it kind of reminds you of Chicago's team from last year. I know yeah. I revert, like, really good defense, inexperienced quarterback. But Frank Gore has been helping take pressure off Josh Allen, but he also doesn't have a lot of weapons. John mm -hmm. Brown's his number one wide receiver, and give a lot of credit to him. He's been playing really well. But I just don't see... I don't know. This game is one, like a tricky one to see who's going to win because if the Eagles can run the ball, they got to give Jordan Howard more carries. They're yeah. disrespecting him. Yeah. Coming from a Bears fan, I didn't think he was in I miss him a lot because he runs downhill, he runs hard, and he'll get you three yards per carry, and he always falls forward. Mm -hmm. He's a great running back. And in a game like this, bad weather, you're going to rely on Jordan Howard. That's why I think the Eagles are going to take this one. I'm going to start with the scoring predictions. I'm going to go Eagles 17, Bills 10. Eric? I'm going to go Eagles. I think the Eagles actually make a statement with this. I actually think the Eagles win. I think they'll beat them 21-14. I don't really have a specific score, but I just think New York's B team is going to 20 ball them. Wow. Yeah. Over 20? Over 20. Josh? 
I'm going Eagles 2017. It'll be a game-winning field goal by Jake Elliott. He will, you know, be the ones that will put the Eagles over the top. And it will be led by Jordan Howard in the running game, like I said. This is a rainy game, messy game. And in those type games, you want, you know, defense and a run game. And I think the Eagles will be able to run behind him, and then they'll be able to get a couple takeaways on the other end, you know what I'm saying, that will basically go in their favor and winning this game. So look for the Eagles to make a st statement like, like we mentioned. This is their bounce back game, you know, against the wall. They will prevail. Yeah, I could see Jordan Howard going for 100 plus, but uh, I'll kick it off. Second game we got 49ers Panthers. This is going to be a great game. The 49ers are undefeated. The Panthers are four and two. We got to talk about defense in this yes. one. No Cam Newton. Kyle Allen's been playing really well. Jimmy Garoppolo's been playing well. Don't think I'm disrespecting both sides of that ball. But the 49ers lead our second in the NFL, allowing 220, 223 and a half yards per game. And their defensive line is loaded. They have five first-round picks on the defensive line, including Nick Bosa and D. Ford. And they haven't been throwing the ball well at all, so that's something to look for. If the 49ers can throw the ball and move it downfield against the Panthers' defense, who's been, who led the league through the first five weeks of the season in passing defense, but the last two weeks they've given up 774 yards passing. So if the 49ers can throw the ball and stretch it downfield, maybe hit George Kittle up the seam a couple times, mm -hmm. I think they take this one. But it'll be interesting to see if... Christian McCaffrey gets shut down against this 49ers front. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> this season, with McCaffrey, the way that he's working, that boy is moving the ball. You cannot stop him. Mm -hmm. He's definitely it's, a top running back. Lines up as a wide receiver. He can run the ball. He's got great hands. He can catch. He does it all. I wouldn't be surprised if he even starts returning punts for yeah. him. He could be, like, he could literally, like, he do could win anything the, on the yeah, field. And he could win the he MVP. As a running back, winning the MVP now in yeah. the NFL is unheard of. Yeah. I actually think that... Um, the 49ers will slow him down. Um, eventually, it gets to a point, football's a team sport, and eventually it gets to a point where one player that isn't a quarterback can't consistently win you games by himself. Yeah, makes sense. And you're going to get to a point where you play a team that's good enough and has good enough defensive personnel that you can't do it all yourself. Mm. Like, when they played the Buccaneers, he accounted for, like, all but 80 of their yards. You can't do that against the 49ers. Mm -hmm. They're undefeated for a reason. Yeah. So I, I think they'll actually, I'll get to that in my bold predictions, but I actually think um, the 49ers will win it convincingly and the, the Panthers will realize why they need Cam Newton back and not to trade him. Okay, well, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if they traded him to Chicago, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to that a little later. But uh, I think the Panthers, and I think it's going to be a low-scoring game because I think the Panthers can stop this 49ers because they're a really ground-and-pound heavy team. Like, they lean on Jimmy Garoppolo because they know he can make plays, but they don't want him to do too much. So I'm gonna, I'll kick off the story yet again. I'm probably, it's gonna be 2017, 49ers. That's crazy. I was gonna say same exact thing. Same exact score, same 49ers exact score. as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like them to, to win because their defense is gonna stop, like slow down the Panthers, but the Panthers are still gonna score some points because yeah. I think McCaffrey punches in two touchdowns. Mm. You both say 2017. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna go 21, 17, 49ers, <laughs> 49ers. I say 49ers will win this game. It will be a low-scoring game, you know, like we believe. It will be 17-10, to 10, 49ers. And I believe that they will be led by their run game. And also I think that Emmanuel Sanders will show up. And I, I believe Kyle Shanahan is a very creative uh, play caller, and he will use his new weapon and get him involved. And I think Christian McCaffrey will still have a big day just because it's Christian McCaffrey and he finds ways to get involved, you know, but 49ers will prevail. Yep. And last game, your Chiefs, Sunday Night Football. Chiefs, Packers, pretty big game for the Chiefs sitting at 4-2. and two, Packers, 6-1. and one. I've been excited for this for a really long time, but um, it's a little upsetting because Mahomes isn't playing. Yeah. But, it's upsetting for um, the whole NFL that you can't watch Mahomes versus Rodgers. Still, Mahomes out, Matt Moore's in. And he actually played really well last week. Um, he was 10 for 19 with like 120 yards and a touchdown, mm -hmm. no picks. Um, this is okay, but he came in a role. They're already yeah. blowing him out. But still, like, still, it's still a solid. It's okay. Outing, yeah. um, I want to say, say really. He played well. a, yeah, he, yeah, played he played a, a, good enough. He played a good defense um, in Denver. I think Mahomes or um, Andy Reid actually like schemes really well for yeah. backup quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So I think that plays to their advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think they, the Chiefs actually played it really smart throughout the week. As Mahomes actually practiced on Wednesday practiced on Thursday, people were starting to think he was actually going to play. And then they ruled him out on Friday. 
Mm. So that means for half the week, the 49 or the Packers were preparing to either play Mahomes or Matt Moore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that helps. They're not yep. fully invested into having to play mm -hmm. Matt Moore because even though he's not nearly as good as Mahomes is, they're different kinds of quarterbacks, so you have to prepare for them differently. Um, yes, the Packers, honest, in my opinion, are probably the best team in football. Um, mm -mm. I think they are. I disagree. I'm going to go with the Saints on that one. No. Patriots. I have to. Yeah, you Patriots can, you haven't know. played anybody. Yeah, that's also I'm true. I'm still like, but got guys. <laughs> the, the Packers have a good defense, yes. Not unbeatable. The Chiefs get Sammy Watkins back. Tyreek Hill and Kelsey are playing. They still have LaShawn McCoy. They still have all the same weapons. Um, the defense actually played really well last week. And yes, it was against Denver. But yes, it's a different thing. They're missing a lot of um, key players. They're missing though. five Mitchell starters. Mitchell Schwartz, uh, Chris Jones. And Mitchell Schwartz is playing. Schwartz it's, is playing. He was questionable coming into the Chris league. Jones, Andrew Wiley, uh, Austin Ryder. Um, a lot of two more. Just a lot, missing, a lot of key They're missing guys, five yeah. starters. But they've been missing well, five Mahomes starters the entire year. Yeah, Mahomes, yeah, so and then there's another deal alignment. But I th actually think the Chiefs find a way because of Andy Reid's play. I think Andy Reid realizes how more, much more important his play calling mm -hmm. is, and he actually amps it up a little bit. I think the Chiefs actually beat the Packers 28-24. Yeah, I'm going to go with no shot on that one. Um, Packers aren't losing this game. The Chiefs offense, I don't care if Mahomes is playing or not. Even if, he, if he, Mahomes was playing, they would have a chance. But I just don't see them beating this Packers team at all. The Packers are so much more balanced on each side of the ball. It doesn't. And I'm not saying it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback, but Matt Moore's playing. It doesn't matter how many points you can put up. It matters how can can you stop Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. He's hot. Yeah. Like once Aaron Rodgers, he's a different breed of quarterback when he gets mm -hmm. hot. He's arguably the most talented quarterback in the NFL. You can say him or Mahomes is the most talented, and. I think he's going to steamroll him, and I say if I'm starting Aaron Rodgers in my fantasy league over Drew Brees this okay. week, making that decision. So I'm going to go Packers 38, Chiefs 21. Wow. Me, I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think it'll be definitely because you know I feel like with the Chiefs, like they have five starters out, Mahomes isn't playing. I don't think they're going to score a lot. I think it's going to be 14-3 uh, Packers. Oh wow. So you yeah, think that I really don't think you don't think I either team's nah. gonna put many points. Yeah. That's surprising because a lot of guys. But sometimes you see like when it, uh, people are thinking shootout, it ends mm -hmm. up being that that's low what, scoring. That's, I, that's what I've game. been every single week. I've been thinking, oh, this game's gonna be a shootout. This game's gonna be high scoring. This and that, and then you realize and then the defense like, to show up. You shuttle yeah. down. You, you come back down to reality, and it's like these defenses in the league this season are insane, and they they shut down mm -hmm. teams. So fourteen three Packers. Yep. I think the final score of this game will be 28-14, and the Packers will win. Honestly, I think Aaron Rodgers will take a back seat today, and I think the running game will really be the people that will you know, show up, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, but mainly Aaron Jones, because the Chiefs got a lot of people out. They got Frank Clark out. They got you know, five starters out. You know what I mean? So they, I feel as though they're weak, and I think they will just steamroll them, and I don't think they will really press Rodgers or let him really worry about getting in the groove of it. It would be more so Aaron Jones just running down their throats, and maybe Aaron Rodgers going to touchdown or so off the play action. But big day from the running game. Chiefs will not be really effective today because no Patrick Mahomes. I don't believe Matt Moore. Matt Moore going against that Packers defense, you know, that's really showing up this year. I don't see it happening, even with the weapons around him. I don't think he can use them. So, yeah, well, that brings us to the best segment of the day, I believe, bold predictions. <laughs> I've been struggling. I don't know how you've been doing your picks. <coughs> I think I have like two or three wins on the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only got one or two, but uh, Josh, start off with your bold predictions today. Our bold predictions, yeah, it's getting crazy. It's week eight. You know, you get bolder every week. So I'm starting off from the rip. You got Drew Brees coming back, you know, and he, like I said, he's itching to get on the field, itching just to destroy a defense, you know, seeing his teams being successful. Drew Brees today will have 400 plus yards and four touchdowns. He's going to carve up that Cardinals uh, defense. You know, who cares that Patrick Peterson is there, Michael Thomas, you know, and the boys will show off today because the Drew Brees is back. And then I'm going to go down to the Bills and the Eagles game. There will be four fumbles in that game because it's just rainy and messy. So there will be turnovers on both sides of the ball. 
So, and I think whoever wins that turnover battle also will win this game. And then number three, I believe Saquon Barkley will have a career game today. You know, he'll have 200 plus yards rushing, you know, just, just rushing 200 plus yards. And then he'll uh, put in like another 70 receiving. So he's going to have a career day today against the Lions. We have the 28th ranked rushing defense. So he's just going to carve them up. So big day from Saquon, big day from Drew, and it'll be a messy game in the Eagles and Bills game. That's my bold predictions this week. All right. I'll send it to you guys. Start off, Matt. What do you All got? All right. So, first one, obviously, is about the Giants. You guys know. <laughs> New York guy. Say it again. Say it always. Uh, Giants win with the biggest point difference in NFL history. <laughs> That's the first one. We starting off big. Number two, I got Eagles lose to New York's B team, Buffalo Bills. <laughs> That's because I feel By like how I'm, much? What's the spread? 20, I got 20, 20 on them. I got 20, 20 spread? On them. I said it before. I got 20 on them. And I'll say that with confidence. 20 points spread. With confidence. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is the game Eagles will bounce back. Stop playing. <laughs> all right, all right. I see. I see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, number three, I got Golden Tate. 100-yard game in return to Detroit. He's been wanting to get back onto that field for the longest, and I feel like him coming in against the tr Detroit – He's going to want to go off. Yeah, you I can know. see that. That's a good one. I like that one a lot. Um, well, I'm going to go Christian McCaffrey. Hold, it gets held to less than 100 scrimmage yards um, total. I talked about it earlier. Um, I think the 49ers find a way to slow him down, and then with him out, the Panthers don't really have anything. Um, I said the Bears shut out the Chargers. Last week, the That'd Bears nice. got massacred yeah. by the Saints. Not, not great. And, um, <laughs> not great. Back up. They're... they're Focal point of their teams, their defense, and that wasn't the case last week. And I think they actually kind of get a little pissed off and bounce back and shut up the Chargers. Um, and Keenan Allen might not play, so they're going to be limited anyway. And I think this is a little biased, but Sammy Watkins, three touchdowns versus the Packers. Mm. Um, uh, so he's back this week for the first time in like three weeks. And um, yes, it's Matt Moore. But at the same time, the uh, Packers defensive coordinator said during the week, almost that every team that never gets to play Tyree Kill does, that they're not sure how they're going to cover Tyree Kill, and yeah. he's never seen that speed before. Mm. So I think they're actually going to put all their focus into taking him and Kelsey away, and I think that opens it back up for yeah. Watkins like it did in the first game of the year. And I think Matt Moore uh, will connect with Sam. Maybe he'll have like one rushing touchdown, mm. like a sweep or something, but... I think Sammy Watkins will have three touchdowns, and that'll his big game will help them beat the Packers. Uh, yeah. Luke, how, how would that even happen if um you know Jair Alexander going to get three picks off of Matt Moore? <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, that, wow. that, that takes it. That off. takes it to mine. Uh, <laughs> I could have that as my bold prediction. I have Matt Moore throws three picks, and one of them goes back. One of them's going back for a touchdown. Not happening. <laughs> um, also, you don't throw three picks on screens. He's only going to throw screens. No, nah, he's going to hit Tyree Kill for a deep touchdown. No, but he, he can't throw screens. He's going to get eager game. with no, no weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all and short I, routes, screen slants. <laughs> uh, one of the screens might get jumped and undercut. Yeah. So, and also, your guy, Jordan Howard, has got to get a lot of carries today. Mm -hmm. I'm saying 150 yards and two touchdowns for Jordan Howard. Yes. My last one. <laughs> the guy, the dude, the number two overall pick two years ago, Mitch Trubisky, against the Chargers. Five touchdowns today, total Ooh. touchdowns. Ooh. He's doing it. He's going off. <laughs> He's coming back. That's the guy. He's going to prove everyone wrong. He was pissed off all week in his pressers, and he's ready to go. He's ready to get this team back on I track and get us back to where we were and where we belong. It. Mr. Bisky, five touchdowns this week. I love the confidence. Thank you. Love Thank to you. See it. With love that, to I see think it. the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that is it. Uh, Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of uh, Sunday Morning Preview, and we hope to see you all next week. Go Bears. <laughs>